Thank you, Mr. President. In a drive-by lawsuit, an attorney will drive by a place of business and look for technical ADA violations. These are usually minor viola violations that are easily correctable. If a technical violation exists, the attorney will either send a demand letter or threaten the business with a lawsuit. Oftentimes, a demand letter will request a settlement that is just under what it would cost the business to litigate. So the business owner picks the lesser of two evils and pays a settlement. The scope of the problem is only growing. For the first, uh, or from the first six months of 2015 to the first six months of 2016, there was a 63% increase in the number of suits filed under Title III of the ADA. This year is on pace to see almost 7,000 of these cases brought forward. 7,000. Now compare 7,000 to the 4,800 lawsuits filed in 2015 and 2,700 in 2013, and you'll see what a boon this has been for trial lawyers. In fact, this past Sunday, 60 Minutes did a special report on drive-by lawsuits and the toll they're taking on small businesses throughout the country. I would encourage anyone to watch that piece. Um, it, it explains the problem very well. While California, Florida, and New York have the highest incidence of these drive-by lawsuits, my home state of Arizona has seen a dramatic increase in these suits over the past three years. In 2013, there were three ADA Title III suits brought in Arizona. Three. By 2015, that number was up to 207. As of September of this year, Arizona has already seen 284. It's clear that the problem is only getting worse. My legislation would go a long way to solve it. If enacted, property owners must first be given notice of their alleged ADA violation, at which point they would have 120 days to cure the violation before the lawsuit can be brought. If the property owner fails to address the violation in a timely manner, then they can be sued. The bill also instructs the Department of Justice to further promote ADA compliance through education so small business owners know what's expected of them. I think these reforms will help business owners and persons with disabilities achieve the mutual goal of ADA compliance. The ADA has been a great success in its 25-year history. It's essential that business owners continue to see it as a tool to ensure fairness uh, for people with disabilities and not as a weapon to line the po pockets of unscrupulous lawyers.